Welcome to this week one installment of our football officials video training series. We're studying the National Federation of High School Rules and Five-Man Mechanics. This video is a production of the Arkansas Association of High School Officials. Visit our website at aahso.com. We're helping good officials get better. Technical assistance, provi Technical assistance provided by Dax Hill, Greg Downham, George Demetrio, and John Duncan. Video assistance provided by Kenny Sanders. Our producer is Matt Bivens. Executive producer is Walt Coleman. I'm your host, Todd Allen. Let's go back to this play that we looked at in the spring, but it's worth reviewing again and talking a little bit in more in depth about this play because I basically threw it out there and said, give me your opinion or what do you think? And we've talked about this in camps and stuff. Um, even around the country, plays generated a lot of interest. When we talk about this play, though, we're going to talk about three keys of this play. The first key is your keys at the snap. And uh, what I want to talk about a little bit is allowing these players to declare. What exactly does that mean? That means you have your initial keys at the snap. And for me, I like the headlines mentality taking these two wide guys and the back judge taking the inside receiver and we talk about these receivers as one two and three and one is the widest receiver on the field so this is one two and three so we talk about the headlinesman having uh one and two in this play the back judge having three and I, it's important i point out too in this that they're using six man in this um particular championship game, but we're going to talk about five-man officials. The National Federation of High School Five-Man Mechanics is what we're talking about. Maybe some variations because there is no language in the five-man mechanics about allowing players to declare, but what exactly does that mean is you're going to have to transition as these players run in and out of zones that you can cover. We don't want the back judge making a ruling about whether a player was forced out or stepped out on his own near the sideline. Headlinesman's going to be in much better shape, much better position to make that ruling, and as we progress this play on on, you're also going to see where that's a fundamental breakdown in this play. The second thing that we're going to focus on falls right in line with that, and that's focusing on your keys. Don't get caught up in the minutia. Don't be a ball watcher. Watch the area of the, res of the field that you have responsibility for. Keep an eye on your keys. And the third thing I want to talk about is a player gaining possession of controlling the ball, completing the catch while he's still upright, and then a subsequent act making him uh, go to the ground. But he was not going to the ground in part of the process of completing the catch. That's critically important because the rules are very, very different. A player who is attempting to complete a catch and in the process of completing that catch goes to the ground, then that player must maintain possession of the ball throughout his contact to the ground. An upright player who completes the catch and then subsequently is taken to the ground does not have to maintain possession of the ball throughout his contact to the ground. That's critically important in this play. We're going to see it play out beautifully. So I'm just going to roll this play several times. You're, you'll see um, replays and backup and freeze frames, and I'll put some graphics in. But start out now with this trips formation. Look at this graphic that uh, we created for this trips formation. Notice how the arrows for the headlines and the back judge all point to the same three players. That's because work all of these players at the initial play and wait for them to declare their position. And I'm going to show you how they declare their position as we roll this video forward. And uh, so... Basically, the headlines at the top of the screen is going to be looking at one and two, but just focus on these and watch them all declare. So back judge is focusing on these players also as we run it in slow motion because I want you to see the action as these players declare their position on the field. Notice how the second player, or player number two, receiver number two that we talked about, is moving to the outside. And player number one has now started toward the inside. That's really, really important. So back judge at this point, I would expect you to have number one. And uh, headlinesman, you should be looking at two and three. Now watch this action at the 15-yard line involving this defender and, the, and receiver number two. So as the receiver runs by, the defender basically just puts a hand on him. He doesn't chuck him, doesn't block him, doesn't put his shoulder into him, doesn't force him to the outside. And it's important that you, as a back it up and roll it forward again that you notice that the receiver stays right on his path. And it's this second step after contact, because here's the contact right here. This step's in bounds. This step's in bounds. Now that step is out of bounds at the 11-yard line. I do not believe that that's a result of that contact at all. And then his next step at the 9.5 is also out of bounds. So let's go right here to where the contact begins. And this is what I think is really, really important to look at and study this play. And it's important, too, that we say again, we're not trying to embarrass any official, but you have to identify your mistakes if you're going to get better. And it's important that all of us look at this mistake and learn from it because there's a mechanical breakdown on this play. And this ends up why we end up in trouble. So we look right here, and this is where the contact's occurring. Right here at the 15-yard line. There's the defender reaching out the hand, making contact. Now look right here. The, 
position of the head of the head linesman shows you that the head linesman is looking back in at the line of scrimmage. With trips formation on your side of the field, you have no responsibility at the line of scrimmage. You've got to have your head upfield looking at this action because this action ends up being a critical part. I'm going to stay on the head linesman with my focus until the head linesman um, moves their head to participate in this play downfield. Now notice here the ball is in the air. And where's the head linesman's head? Still looking in just like this. Now that the ball gets in the air and actually passes the position of the head linesman on the field, do we see the head linesman turn their head? And now the head linesman is moving upfield on this key, but too late to help. Now, I want to focus on some action involving this receiver because we notice that he is stride for stride, running full speed now to, to the point of the ball. His focus of concentration is on the ball. And uh, he reaches out and catches that and then turns his body and runs up the field. There's been no contact by the defender yet. So he's got the ball. He's actually tucked the ball into his right arm, turned, and now the defender completely wraps him up. And as the defender wraps him up, he extends his body forward. Everything's still up. Nothing on the ground yet. He gets his left hand down. So let me back that up. And I want to play it at, at full speed for you because it's important. This player completes this catch. Here he grasps and controls the ball, gets both feet down, but we know he just needs to get one foot down the National Federation of High School. So complete control of the ball, one foot down, turns, rotates his body completely up the field, and is running full speed before both arms of the defender wrap his legs up, and then he extends out and reaches for the goal line. We don't have a shot right down the goal line, but looking for compression on this, um, we can't tell that anything, doesn't look like anything goes down until this ball is extended and makes contact with the goal line. So once this ball breaks the plane of the goal line, if we rule this as a catch, all of this action that happened up the field, six yard line to the four yard line, as the action that completed the catch, then this is an upright player that does not have to maintain possession of the ball throughout the contact with the ground. This would just be, this player would be down because he's got body parts on the ground, but he's, he's broken the plane of the goal line. So all the elements are in place here, in my opinion. This is a touchdown. But let me just say this, too. Critically important. This happens real fast. And this is in real speed. And they don't get the benefit in this game of replay like we would if we were watching this game in um, the NFL or the NCAA. Tough play. But I think we saw some mechanical breakdowns of this play that uh, made it more difficult for the crew to get this play right. Understanding those elements and how we can work together and improve would give us a better shot if we had this exact same play again. Let's take a look at another championship game, this one out of Arkansas. And this is a crazy ending, even crazier than the one we watched with the Georgia game, which was not exactly at the end of the game. But um, this play brought a lot of attention to the Arkansas championship games. And I want to make a couple of points that I think are really important. First of all, really important for our back judge, but not just the back judge. The back judge through the whole game, but the rest of the crew, when we're in these critical end-of-game situations, you have to own the clock, especially if the ball ends up dead in your area. You've got to know the status of that clock and how much time is on it. It's really important in this play as we watch here. The uh, quarterback for Warren's going to get tackled inbounds. Warren's out of timeouts. And as we blow the whistle for uh, as we blow the ready for play whistle here and the referee backs out, notice how much time is on the clock. So you've got to make a mental note of where we are in the game as far as the status of the clock um, because you never know when crazy things are going to happen. This is a fan that comes onto the field and interrupts the game, and we have a chaos as the police take this player or take this fan out and tackle him on, on to the ground and carry him off of the field. But, you know, mayhem as we try to figure out exactly how we're going to figure this out. And here's another point that I want to make because this game is at a neutral field, so neither team is responsible responsible for security at the stadium. It's being handled by um, a separate law enforcement agency. Um, it's not related to the school because this is a neutral site. But it's equally as important to understand sometimes as game officials things are going to happen where there's just absolutely nothing we can do about it. It's going to change the outcome of the game and it's really not fair and that's tough for us as officials because what we want to do is we want all everything to always work out so that the right team wins the game. And the right team is the team that puts the plays together and scores the most points and doesn't have things like a fan running out onto the field or a streaker or you know any of the other the scoreboard 
crowd go out, the stadium lights go out. There's just a plethora of things that can go wrong, and it's just difficult for us to, to stomach those sometimes that it's going to end up bad. And this is one of those situations that just ends up bad. But uh, what we do is here we enforce a 15-yard penalty, and, uh, you know, that's that's – tough for me to swallow also because this had nothing to do with the kids had nothing to do with the coaches but at the same time we don't want a team that's out of timeouts to be able to get a kicking team on and and score the the game winning point because one of their fans ran out on the field and stopped the game so you know I get that this is one of those areas where the rule um, and the rules it's just not specifically addressed and I think our referee has broad authority to do what he think is what he thinks is equitable and uh, what we do here's a 15-yard penalty, but our, our big mistake here is that we go back to 12 seconds on the clock, and we saw from this uh, video replay that there's a, there should have, at the very most, the ready-for-play whistle, when everyone was ready to snap the ball, seven seconds is the most time we can put back on. But, you know, that's just a five-official error, but it's not really, you know, at this point of the game, it's just a really, really big error. But here's the thing that I, that I think is more important than all of that is we've got television at this game, and we've got uh, people all over the state watching it live. They know that the ready-for-play whistle was blown at seven seconds. There has to be a way on these high-profile games that we're putting on live television that we have to be able to get that information to the game crew. Through the through the use of some type of electronic uh, walkie-talkies or someone on the field who can communicate directly with the, with the officiating crew, because there was a long interruption here in the game. We were stopped trying to sort this thing out for a significant um, amount of time. Enough time that we should have gotten word to the crew about how much time should be on the clock. And if we had done that, I think we would have been in much better situations to handle this play, to end this game correctly. And um, how it went uh, is going to be the subject of debate for a long time. I can't solve that here, not even going to try. But I do think the big takeaway from this is these high-profile neutral field games that are on live television, we have to use the technology to help the crews get the plays right. Let's take a look at a kickoff play. It's a an appropriate play for our kickoff weekend of our 2018 training video. A couple of things I want to point out about this video. Um, as we watch this kick play, keep an eye on this player right here. But more importantly on this official right here. Now, what we need to do is talk about on kick place or any change of possession. It doesn't matter. There is no blocking below the waist at all. After a change of possession, no matter where you are or where you started, inside or outside of any tackle box that may have existed, it doesn't matter. If there's any change of possession, there's no blocking below the waist in the down. So we see this player right here and this action right here. But what I want to point out that's so important is look at the posture of this official. He's got that something's not right look on his face. And one thing I want to encourage you, if you see something or you thought you saw something and you, but you weren't confident in throwing it, hey, I'm okay with that. We're all going to miss potential penalties. That's fine. You don't have to call everything that you, have, you see, but you need to see everything that you call. And this is a classic example of, I don't know what caught his attention, but he knew something wasn't right. If you think it's a block below the waist after the play, don't be afraid to run and find that player and say, hey, 21, make sure all the blocks are up high. Because let's go to this play. And you can tell by the time of day that this is a, this is a kick later in the game. But uh, here is that same player, and here is this same official. Look where he's focused. Now, the important thing about this is he's focusing right on where he, his eyes need to be because this is the first wave, the first defender down the field or the kicking team player down the field, and this is where the potential fouls are. So that's where we need to be working. Excellent job. But he's also suspicious of this player, and I'm assuming that because I haven't talked to the official. But I think he sees. I think he saw just part of this the first play, didn't feel comfortable throwing it, but remembered it and stayed focused and found this player again. Right at the threat, he's officiating right at the point of attack, and a nice pickup here for another illegal block below the waist. And uh, just easy to remember, any change of possession, all the blocks have got to be up high. Talk to the players. Preventive officiating. This is an excellent pickup for an illegal block below the waist. That's it 
for this week's video. A shortened version because I'm under a little time pressure. I'm actually putting this together on Friday afternoon here, trying to get it out tonight before your games. But a lot going on in the association. Appreciate all your hard work. Hey, if it's a little hot and humid, don't be afraid to stop. Don't interrupt a potential momentum part of the drive, but don't be afraid to stop and water the players up. Be sure to hydrate yourself, too. Uh, you're not getting any younger, and it's tough work out there keeping up with these kids. We've got some phenomenal athletes. Uh, in case no one has said this to you as you prepared for the season and get out there for your week one games this week, thanks for what you do. You make a big impact on a lot of young people who play a game that we really, really love, and I appreciate your effort. Questions or comments, feel free to email me. It's Todd at AAHSO.com. For the Arkansas Association of High School Officials, this is Todd Allen saying, hope to see you on the field real soon.